All right, I'm going to do a video here showing the artificial wealth of the supposed rich people of this world and how that it goes back to Satan actually owning things and he actually lends it out to people. I'm going to show you proof today of two of the uh, very wealthy people out there. Uh, they're not actually wealthy and the one actually admits it. I'll show you the proof. Luke chapter 4 verse 5 in the King James Bible says, And the devil taking him up into an high mountain showed him unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Now what does the Lord say back to him? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Jesus doesn't say, Hey, Satan, that's not true. Um, it's good, hard-working people that get the kingdoms and, and get the wealth and everything. No, actually, Satan is the God of this world, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Look up the verse. But right there you see this satanic formula. If you're going to serve the devil, he'll give you the kingdoms, He'll give it to you in, in the sense of, oh, here you go, but it's still his. Okay, now let me show you some proof here. Uh, here you have Elon Musk. This interview that was done over a year ago, I guess now, on the Babylon B. Interesting name there. Uh, Mystery Babylon, you know. Um, but listen to what he says about, you know, everybody, oh, Elon Musk is the wealthiest man alive. He's, he's just so wealthy. He's not wealthy. Listen to what he says here. It's very interesting. I mean, I'm not sure it's, it's, it's all that productive or interesting. You know, essentially all of my net worth is, uh, is just in SpaceX and Tesla stock. All of his net worth is in SpaceX and Tesla stock. Oh, no, he has a big mansion and everything else. It's all tied into his company. And you'll see who owns his company here. We have these two companies that, that I helped create uh, and, and have run uh, for now almost 20 years um, have done a lot of useful things. Um, SpaceX is the launches more payload to orbit than the rest of the world combined um, and has a, a global internet system called Starlink and, and is the primary provide, well, the, the only U.S. provider of uh, astronaut transport to the, the space station. Um, we publish six to eight satire articles a day. <laughs> yeah. Some of them are funny. So that's, <laughs> uh, I mean, pretty good. So, so, so SpaceX, uh, yeah, it transports U.S. Um, and uh, as well as non-U.S. Uh, astronauts to the space station. I learned something many years ago, and that is somebody with shifty eyes, when their eyes balls go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, that means that they're lying. And I've met a lot of people that do that. Their eyeballs will dart back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This way, they're lying. They're deceiving people. Watch his eyeballs as he's talking about going to the space station and all this other stuff, which I don't even believe in. But, you know, check it out. Um, that was previously the U.S. was dependent on, on Russia. Uh, it was doing a good job, but charging kind of crazy money per seat. Mm -hmm. So as far, with, with SpaceX, the, the, the cost per... Astronaut dropped uh, dramatically, and and the money was you know went to jobs in the U.S. So th th that's what why why people you know think SpaceX is valuable. Uh, Tesla. Uh, is, I mean the annoyance though of like people uh, holding it against you that you've had success, holding it against you that you have wealth. Um, you know, viewing billionaires as evil and. He doesn't have wealth. Let's see, commoner thinks. Wealthy man there. Oh, he's got it all. He doesn't have anything. Just continue watching. He'll talk about it. You know, you're not doing enough to give back. You know, you have, like the Elizabeth Warren thing, that you haven't paid your fair share. I mean, that's, you know, it's, that's got to be kind of aggravating. Yeah, I think it's just important to understand, like, like what is this wealth? Uh, it's not like some, it's not like I've got, like, some, some massive, massive cash balance. Uh, I've, my cash balances are, are very, very low. My cash balances are very, very low. See, again, please understand something. The spiritual tie-in to the whole economics world, what I showed you in Luke chapter 4, the devil gives these kingdoms to people, but he still retains the ownership of them. So you get up into the wealthy ranks, 
there are, people aren't just sitting around, you know, with hordes of cash or gold coins or something like that. They're tied in with the whole satanic system. They're, they're made to be a figurehead that, oh, look, I'm wealthy or something like this, but it's all just being loaned out mm -hmm. by the stockholders. But his actual cash, oh, I don't really have much cash. Let's continue. Um, and at least until I sold stock, uh, which is really the first time I've actually sold stock uh, in any meaningful way, uh, was, was this quarter. Um, I, I simply had loans against my, my stock. So I, 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 if, if Tesla and SpaceX went bankrupt, I would go bankrupt too. If Tesla and SpaceX went bankrupt, I would go bankrupt, bankrupt too. And he had loans against his stock. Is he really wealthy? No. Mm -hmm. He's a debtor slave. Hmm. Oh, he's the richest man alive. No, he isn't. Ba basically, all the money he has is the money in his wallet. And oh, he has this great house. It's to debt. Mm -hmm. Mortgage debt. Yeah, tied to his company. If his company goes belly up, he will too. Let's continue. Immediately. So, um, it's not it's, realized, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's not. No, it, it's just like people. It's just like it's like, um, you know, I built these two companies, uh, and it was extremely difficult to build them, um, like massively painful and difficult. Uh, massively painful and difficult. Hmm, that wouldn't be confirming scripture now, would it? First Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Oh. Very painful and difficult, says Elon Musk. And yet, how many churches are even talking about this stuff? If Elon Musk walked into the average church building, it'd be, oh, Mr. Musk, oh, 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 could you please sit over here? Oh, oh, Mr. Musk. They would look and say, you poor critter, you. Sold your soul to the devil so that you could be put as the figurehead for some big company. Just disgusting. Let's continue here a little bit farther, and we'll cover another false uh, wealthy family. Um, rewarding too, but also but, but massively painful and difficult. Um, and uh, and and I didn't I didn't sell the stock in the companies. Um, you know, I, I, you know, my my sort of impression was that uh, you know you you shouldn't take money off the table, or you shouldn't you shouldn't take stock off the table and de-risk things. That a captain should go down, you know, with their ship. So. So it's like, okay, like, I, you know, I don't want to take money off the table, and then, then if the companies fail, then I will be, I'll be sort of enriched while investors suffer, and that does not seem right. So anyway, so I, that, that's the reason I didn't sell, is, is I could easily have diversified and, and protected myself financially if, if SpaceX or Tesla went bankrupt, but I, I did not. Um, and SpaceX and Tesla came very close to bankruptcy many times. Even when bankruptcy was literally weeks away, I did not sell stock. Uh, and then the companies became valuable. Not, Tesla's value is, and SpaceX's value is not, it's not up to me, it's up to investors. Tesla and SpaceX, they're, the value of those companies, it's not up to me, it's to, up to investors. Hmm. Um, just like the people out in Hollywood, these actors, oh, they're wealthy. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. They're the public face. Behind them are the investors. And if the investors all go, we're done with this investment, boom, the Hollywood actor or actress is assassinated. They're killed. Happens all the time. You want to serve the devil? You want to go and become ultra wealthy, quote unquote, ultra wealthy? Yeah, they'll dump you just like that. It's up to the investors. And you go back through those investors, I guarantee you, it goes back eventually to the devil. They're all Freemasonic you know, Luciferians, and that's why they, where they get their money, to invest in all these big things like this. But you know, don't fall for this lie, oh, he's the wealthiest man alive. No, he's not. No, he is not. Let's continue a little bit further here. Um, and they, 
decided it was worth Tesla was worth a trillion dollars in the public market. So, and I own twenty percent of the company. So, so you're not apologizing right now. You're not going to look into the camera and say I'm so sorry. Look in the camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to explain. Like I don't think people necessarily understand. They don't. Yeah, um, yeah. That uh, that this this is not you know the, the, some function of, of sort of hoarding or something. It's it's simply that. You know, I own 20% of the company that became very valuable as decided by external investors. And it's decided by external investors. And again, see these goofy guys, they're just, you know, little peasants essentially. And this guy here, he's put into, uh, he's rubbing shoulders with the real investors, with the real money that are behind his company. And they're all peasants, really, to be honest with you. But they, <laughs> they're just laughing about it. Well, he's worth all this money, and he's trying to explain. No, I'm actually not. He's actually being honest. Pretty amazing. Which is crazy. Yeah. Watch a little bit more here. And so, twenty percent of a trillion dollar valuation is two hundred billion dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've, you know, I've said at various times that I think the stock price is too high, um, but the, the investors just ignored that. The investors ignored it. It's his company. He's the, supposedly the head of the Tesla company. And he says, oh, that price is too high. And the investors say, oh, shut up. You know, they don't care what he has to say. See? You see how dumb the average person is? They look at this guy and they think he's wealthy. He's, he's a figurehead. That's all he is. He's not wealthy. He's poor. That's what happens when you serve the devil. A few more seconds and then we'll quit on this one. I'm like, okay. I literally said it's too high. Um, and uh, they just kept... Make the price higher. So I'm like, tell them our values too. So and then they all more jokes, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but there you have it. One of the supposedly the richest man alive, and he's saying, "I'm not actually wealthy. It's all just stock in a company, and and I don't even decide things. I don't even make the final decisions. It's the investors. I guarantee you, they're all high level Jesuits and Freemasons and whatever else. But now I'll show you another one that people think is wealthy. And in fact, think is a king, and he's not a king. Okay. Um, we do a lot of study and a lot of research into the thing of proper, you know, usage of the Bible term or Bible terms and biblical terms. And um, to call this guy a king is a serious insult. These people are just actors; they're peasants. They're, and I'm going to show you some interesting things about this. Um, king Charles evicts disgraced Prince Andrew from Buckingham Palace. Report. And it talks about evicting this guy and, and things, his brother, and all this. Um, what do you mean evict? Shouldn't it be more like, uh, hey, you should leave or something or whatever? And you can go down through the, the whole thing here. The guy's a pervert. If you don't know the story about this guy, he's um, different girls have come out and said, yeah, underage. And he was, you know, basically uh, raping them at Jeffrey Epstein's island thing. But uh you get into it, and these false royals here, they they are uh, renting most of their places. Let me show you some more proof of this. Um, could be evicted from his $30 million home after King Charles' last move, or latest move. Eviction? I mean, if you're truly wealthy, then you own your property. You're not going to be evicted. You're not renting someplace. It's really weird. Um, I thought this was interesting, too. Why Charles and Camilla keep separate homes and their own bedrooms? Because they're actors, you see. They're not real, right? Which is kind of funny because here's another one. I said this, sleeping in separate bedrooms for the Andersons. And I show in this, this uh, thing here where Stephen Anderson and his wife sleep in separate bedrooms. Uh, okay, uh, chapter, book chapter and verse on that one. The marriage bed singular. Um, is honorable and undefiled. The book of Hebrews. Uh, and I go into the whole thing there and whatever else. There's some major issues with you. you're sleeping in separate bedrooms um, as a husband and wife. Um, some weird things there. But hey, it's for the false royals here. Hey, they keep separate, not just separate bedrooms, but separate homes. Really weird. <laughs> but uh, detailed map You've always wanted to see of where all the royals live at Kensington Palace. Well, they're worth billions of dollars, but they can just go buy whatever they want, right? Uh, not so. You down through here, apartment 1A, Prince William and Kate Middleton. 
apartment? Huh? Apartment 1, Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. A, a rent house, Duke and Duchess of Kent. Well, I guess they have a better place, but I, I don't know. Apartment 10, Prince and Princess of Kent. <laughs> apartment 8 and 9, Princess Diana's former residences. Till they, you know, she was done being used of the devil, and then they killed her. And, you know, you can go down through here. Nottingham Cottage, Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooks Bank. I think that's the last one there. But, uh, apartments? It's an apartment complex. Yeah, apartment 1A. No, they're, they're making, they're billionaires. They're multi-billionaires. Can't you afford a place? <laughs> you know, kind of odd. Um, all the details on Adele Cottage, Prince William, and Kate Middleton's likely new home. Did they buy it? No, you get down through and things. Oh, they're just going to, it's going to be leased to them and whatever else. We, you know, just kind of odd, you know. Uh, inside Adele Cottage where Prince William, Kate, and kids will call home. It's like she's got a, looks like she has a UFO crash on her head there or something. <laughs> uh, very practical hat there. That would really help with rain, you know. Be kind of funny. Just all acting. It's funny. You say, oh, come on. It's not acting. I'll show you some more proof here. King Charles is giving up the Welsh country estate that took him 40 years to find. Take a closer look at the 192-acre property. There he is there with, you know, I guess they're posing together. They they can be together, you know, for pictures. But, you know, when they it's time to go home and go to bed, oh, good night. You know, see you tomorrow there, other actress or whatever the situation is. Go to your house. I'll go to mine. <laughs> Such a weird thing. But uh, King to give up lease on Welsh Country Estate. Huh? So he's leasing it? He doesn't own it? Peasant? Hmm. Royal removal. King Charles gives up $1.2 million houses. He looks to trim his huge list of multi-million pound properties around the country. Um, is it him or his investors that own these places? Investors. No, no, no. He, you see, he's a king. Kings, they own things or whatever. He's been soccer hall. Uh, oh, that's perfectly fine. The they, Bible says it is not for kings to drink strong drink. The King James Version. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he gets his militancy from. but uh, But this is an interesting thing here. Inside Kate Middleton's pragmatic view of her royal role, you sign on the dotted line and you deliver, <laughs> says Source. <laughs> it's okay. like a mortgage. You know, down here she says uh, she knows the importance of the institution and her role to play, role to play. A source close to Kate tells people in this week's cover story she knows that being a member of the royal family is a bit like having a contract. You sign on the dotted line and you deliver. Okay. Uh, is the acting an acting career? They're renting apartments, leasing different places, and they're signing contracts and delivering. I don't think they're really truly royal. Um, what to know about Queen Elizabeth II's wealth and the future of the British monarchy's finances? And it goes down through here. They don't have to pay taxes on certain things, but they're getting subsidies and and uh, basically welfare, you know, I mean, it's, it's so bizarre to see this stuff. And again, what would happen if one of these royal family members, what would happen if they walked into a church building? The people would be falling over themselves. Oh, you're royal oh, 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 They're actors. That's all that they are. It's incredible. Prince Andrew faces eviction from Windsor as castle or as King Charles slashes income report. Okay, real true wealthy people aren't going to be evicted. They aren't going to lose everything because they know how to invest their money correctly and save their money and spend their money wisely. But this I thought was pretty interesting. It's, it talks about uh, in Romania. Here, I'll go to this part here. Listen to what uh, Charles says. This is back when he was Prince Charles, you know, 11 years ago. Here we go. Back to Romania's dark and distant past. The genealogy shows that I'm descended from Vlad the Impalos. So I do have a bit of a stake in the country. As it were. 
<laughs> that is funny. Yes, make a joke about this evil Vlad, um, the impaler, that would actually take sharpened wooden stakes and whatever and impale people on them. Uh, killed over 80,000 people. He was a Roman Catholic, and Charles says, I'm actually a descendant from you know, Vlad the Impeller, and I have a stake in the country. Ha, ha, ha. You have a stake, you know, that you're impaling people on. And this is the guy here, you know. I come from Dracula. Dracula, you know, basically meaning Satan's son. Uh, you wouldn't think that, that he would bow down and worship the devil, would you? No, of course not. Of course not. He would never think of doing that. And I'm sure that Elon Musk wouldn't think of doing that, even though he wears Baphomet, you know, wore a Baphomet suit at Halloween and, you know, jokes about the devil and everything else. So, um, wake up to the reality of the world, all right? And I, again, it, it boggles my mind. You're here for a lot of the same reasons that I'm here. Um, you hear things at this ministry, at King James Video Ministries, that you never heard in church buildings, if you grew up in church buildings. If you didn't grow up in church buildings, you didn't miss anything, except for a lot of bad experiences. Um, why don't churches talk about this stuff? It's so bizarre. It's just sort of the Bible is just this book for moral conduct, and it teaches you how to be a good person, but that's where it ends. No, the Bible is a lot more than that. The Bible shows us the reality of the world, the reality that you have a bunch of people like this guy here that has dedicated himself to the devil. And he doesn't, and you actually say, are, are you really truly wealthy? I think it's a good thing that he actually was honest. No, not really. I really, I'm kind of low on cash. I really don't have that much. It's just all stock in these companies that my investors own and they tell me what to do. He's not the head of anything. You know, and you get this, you know, goofball, oh, Charles, you know, what a goofball. Oh, he's, yeah, he's wealthy, and oh, he's a king. No, he's not. So, there's only one king, and that is Jesus Christ. Uh, some men in the past and things like that, I think very highly of King James, um, and going back, some of the kings before him and whatever, but a lot of these guys, they're just, you know, they're frauds. So, um, never fall for this stupid nonsense of, Wow, look at the wealthy people out there. The people that are that the media is telling you that they're wealthy, uh, they're actually very poor and in a lot more bondage than those of us that have been, been made free in Jesus Christ. Uh, the Lord has, when he pays for your sins and he imputes his righteousness to you, he can bless you in ways that are amazing. And we can walk around as free men. Is this guy free? Can he just go wherever he wants to go? No, he can't. How about uh, Muskie here? Can he just go wherever he feels like going? Or any other celebrity and, and things? No, they're slaves. They're in bondage. That's why he said it's very painful getting to his level. He's absolutely telling the truth in that. So, um, just wanted to get this out there. Teach your children these things, brethren. For those of you with young children, teach them th these things. Show them, th show them these things. And just say, it's foolish to go out and try to get wealthy and everything else. You see what it leads to. So that is going to be it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.